Mariupol Mayor Vadim Borchenko claimed that Russian soldiers occupying the devastated Mariupol city have destroyed nearly 1,300 high-rise apartment buildings. As the brutal Russian war in Ukraine has entered its 108th day, the Ukrainian mayor of Mariupol, Vadim Borchenko claimed on Friday that Russian soldiers occupying the devastated Mariupol city have destroyed nearly 1,300 high-rise apartment buildings without properly removing hundreds of dead remains trapped beneath the wreckage. Taking to the city council's telegram, Mariupol mayor said, the real number of bodies under the rubble of destroyed houses is frightening. Almost 50 to 100 people were killed under almost every destroyed house, and 1,300 high-rise buildings were destroyed in Mariupol. Borchenko, who fled Mariupol for a Ukrainian-controlled area, also added citing citizens within the city. Initially, the occupiers involved Mariupol residents in dismantling the rubble carefully, CNN reported. However, according to Borchenko, when the Russians discovered the true number of victims under the debris, they promptly moved the locals. In addition to this, Borchenko went on to say that since building destruction has been done indiscriminately, the dead bodies of Mariupol citizens killed in the conflict have been dumped in the same landfill as the concrete debris. Point two two. Oh, 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 Mariupol citizens were slain during the three month conflict. On May 25th, Petro Andrei Ushchenko, a mayor's aide who has also been relocated to Ukrainian controlled territory, told CNN that Mariupol town hall authorities think at least 22,000 citizens were slain during the three month conflict. Whereas, Mariupol Mayor Borchenko said on Friday that the actual number of individuals slain in the city may be far higher than what they have reported. Mariupol, which has been momentarily seized by invading Russia, is suffering from one of the nation's worst humanitarian disasters. The city was nearly completely devastated by the enemy's shelling. Electricity, water, and gas are now inaccessible in Mariupol. Amid this situation, the British Defense Ministry has issued a warning that the Ukrainian city of Mariupol is at risk of a significant cholera outbreak citing isolated cholera instances observed since May. The UK Ministry of Defence indicated in its latest intelligence briefing on June 10 that medical services in Mariupol are likely already near collapse and that a big cholera epidemic will exacerbate the situation. In addition, the ministry stated that the Kherson area is also experiencing a medical scarcity. In the most recent intelligence update, the UK Defence Ministry stated, there is likely a critical shortage of medicines in Kherson, while Mariupol is at risk of a major cholera outbreak. Isolated cases of cholera have been reported since May. The Patriot missile defence system is in high demand. The Patriot air defence missile system has been a jewel in the United States military crown since Operation Desert Storm when it went up successfully against the notorious Iraqi Scud missile. Allies know this, that's why the Patriot is a popular target for foreign military sales. Not every ally gets the prize. Ukraine has made its intentions known that it wants to have the Patriot system sent to Kyiv, while South Korea is consummating a recent purchase. Let's take a closer look at the Patriot to see why it is so popular. Pack 3 is going to South Korea. Lockheed Martin makes the Patriot Advanced Capability 3, Pack 3 and South Korea just greenlighted a purchase of $600 million over the next five years to receive Pac-3 interceptors. The country's older Pac-2 launchers will be upgraded to enable interaction with the newer Pac-3's Missile Segment Enhancement MSE, interceptors. The Pac-2 has a range of 12 miles while the Pac-3 can destroy bogies at 24 miles. Seoul has wanted to give a boost to its missile defense system for years to counter North Korea's ballistic missile threat. South Korea building its missile defenses. South Korea has a multi layered missile defense array with American POX and the TOD, Terminal High Altitude Area Defense, along with destroyers with the Aegis Anti Missile Combat System. The South Koreans also have their homegrown medium range anti missile system called the Kyalame 2. Must protect Seoul from the north. The Republic of Korea ROK, military has long wanted to get a missile defense umbrella over Seoul and other cities. 
the Pack 3 additions will help them achieve better protection. One Pack 3 launcher has 16 missiles. It only takes 30 minutes to get the missile ready to fire. Specs are impressive. K. Allen Mills, writing in Defense World on June 8, said, Indeed, these Pack 3 MSE interceptor missiles are an upgrade. These rockets have a two pulse, solid fueled motor that will surely increase altitude and their range of abilities to defend against continuously evolving threats. This motor gives the interceptor greater power and range, and the Pack 3 is a world leader in hit to kill technology. No relief for Ukraine. The Americans are willing and able to sell Pack 3s to South Korea, but Ukraine is another story. Sensing even more missile attacks at the hands of the Russians, Kyiv has its eyes on the Patriot system. The United States has sent long-range artillery such as the M777 Toad Howitzer and counter-battery radar, 10 and slash TPQ-36 Firefinder weapon locating radar systems, that could target a Russian land-based ballistic or cruise missile launcher. But no Patriot defenders. Pentagon spokesman John Kirby has stated that the Patriot systems would require American soldiers on the ground and that training Ukrainian personnel on the advanced capability interceptors was not an option. Soldiers who serve on Patriots are in high demand around the world. Whenever there is a deployment or training mission, the brass always wants air defense artillery soldiers to be near friendly forces. So, it stands to reason that existing Patriot troops are already gainfully employed and not able to train the Ukrainians. Plus, the United States wants snow boots on the ground in Ukraine. Bartering works too. Another option is swapping missile defense systems by sending the Patriot to NATO allies and then having the receiving country deliver a different air defender to Ukraine. This happened in April when President Joe Biden approved a Patriot system to be sent to Slovakia so the country could in turn ship an S-300 system to Ukraine. This Patriot will have American soldiers deployed to operate it. This makes more sense because the Ukrainians already know how to control an S-300. Obviously, Kyiv wants more than just one. But it is a start. Of course, it is still frustrating to the Ukrainians that the system can be sold to South Korea and at least a dozen U.S. allies but not made available to President Volodymyr Zelensky's forces. Russia has fired precision guided missiles and unguided missiles that have punished Ukrainian cities and killed and maimed civilians. They want the best missile defenders in the world to counter this threat, and Zelensky is always persistent. So maybe the United States will change its mind.